now that we've discussed capacitors in circuits and we've discussed resistors in circuit we like to combine them into what we call some kind of combination of resistor and capacitor and this is what we call a RC circuits there's two types of problems that tends to come up with RC circuits the first one is this I have here where it talks about times like immediately after and then it talks about af a long time after and this is implying that you're either at the very start where you're either completely uncharged as is implied here or you can be fully discharged in which case this is part A by the way when that happens what you know is all the capacitors have Q equal to zero and because we know V is equal to Q times C that implies your V is equal to zero and if you have a circuit component with no potential drop and there's no limit to the current that it supplies then it basically acts like a wire so when we have complete discharge capacitors at the very instant immediately after you start charging it there's no charge in it so it acts like a wire so we redraw the circuit so that we replace them with wires the switch is closed now and then the capacitor is replaced with a wire and then this capacitor is also replaced with a wire and so you have R1 here, R2, R3 still in your 12 volts and they want the current through R1 so let's call it I1 say of course we can use Kirchhoff's rule, loop rule, junction rule but notice that there's only one single source here, the single battery so we can reduce this down using equivalent resistors which may be a little faster instead of solving three or four simultaneous linear equations so we have this bit which becomes parallel resistance so RP1 over is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and that's going to be 1 over 100 ohms plus 1 over 100 ohms so then RP is going to be 50 ohms again taking that reciprocal then the R total which is series with R1 and your RP so you just simply add them up so 100 plus 50 is 150 given that because in the series the total current is the same as the current through the first resistor so we can find that out very easily using I is equal to V over R the total voltage is 12 volts divided by 150 ohms we're going to get 0 0.08 amps so that's how much current passes immediately after the switch has been closed so yeah so look for those keywords uncharged fully discharged immediately after things like that then there's the opposite extreme where we just leave it for a very very long time implying that the whole system has a chance to reach full equilibrium wherein all the capacitors are fully charged so if a capacitor is completely full it has basically built up enough potential across its plates to basically prevent any more charges from going into them so that implies that the current is zero so unlike at the very start the voltage is zero now the current is zero because it's fully charged which is not at all like a wire in fact it's like an open switch or an open connection so if we replace that with open switches then you see that we no longer even have a circuit in this case you cannot draw a path from the positive terminal to negative terminal by simply going through the wires there's no circuit then we know that the current going through any of the resistor must be zero then they can ask us also in part C then how much energy is stored in C1 after a certain amount of time the energy stored within the capacitor is given by half times the amount of charge times voltage you might be wondering where the half comes from because you remember that energy is just charge times voltage but as you charge up over time the earlier charges it takes less work to put them on the opposite side of the plates because the plates weren't charged at the time if you take the integral you'll find out you get this one half factor 
which is probably more obvious with the other two forms where you get the square. So since we're given capacitance, we just need the voltage. To get the voltage, we can use Kirchhoff's rules. So in this case, we want the charge through C1. So if we go through the loop around the outside, so say like that, that's a valid loop because we're not sur solving for everything. There's no necessarily worry about doing the open window pane thing. All the loops are valid. It's just we were worried about redundancy before. But now we just want to do the one loop and we can see that you gain 12 volts right here and then you lose nothing because I is equal to zero. And so you must lose everything here because you lose again nothing here. So that tells us for sure that VC1 must be 12 volts. In fact, it's negative 12 volts based on the way you're traversing it because that's the positive side. So the energy then is equal to one half. My C is 10 millifarads. It's a fairly big capacitor. And you take the 12 volts and you square it. You end up with a seemingly small amount of energy. So to summarize, the key to dealing with these question is well, to first notice that this, this type of question where they talk about you have a switch, something fully uncharged, immediately after the switch is closed, you have the fully discharged case. And then after a long time, then you have the fully charged case. Of course, they could put it in reverse if there's no sources. Uh, you might start with a fully charged capacitor, and then after a long time, it becomes fully discharged. So just read into that. But in either case, if you're a fully uncharged capacitor replace it with a wire and analyze the circuit. If you have a fully charged capacitor, you can first of all treat it like a switch that's open in terms of figuring out the current. And then once you figure out the current, then you can go back and figure out how much voltage is across the plate. In that case, it acts like a battery if it's allowed to discharge.